Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we are in Genesis, I'm sorry, Exodus, chapter 14, and we begin our study in verse 21. Father, we ask that you would add your blessings to the word we are about to read. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is our twelfth study through the book of Exodus. Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. I can understand wind that causes waves, but how about wind so strong that it holds water back from two directions at the same time? What a miracle. Verse 22. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. This is what you call stepping out by faith. They walked between two walls of water at night in the dark. Verse 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them, into the midst of the sea all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen you know they must have forgotten about the ten plagues and the message that those plagues sent how could anyone watch God fight for for his people and against them for so long and still think that they could win Pharaoh's sin has driven him mad 24 Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and he troubled the army of the Egyptians and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. Boy, I love that. I love that. God took off their wheels so that was... uh, so that it was hard for them to drive. Yeah, I would say that. Verse 25. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. No kidding. Boy, you talk about slow learners. Hey, what do you know? I believe the Lord is fighting for Israel. Well, I think it's about time they learn that. But it's just a little bit too late. 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. Moses was hearing God's voice. Whether it came out of the pillar of fire, I do not know. But I I know Moses heard it as clearly as you are hearing me right now. Verse 27. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The walls of water came crashing down. The powerful waves blew the chariots apart and tossed the soldiers in every direction. The sea has become the grave of Pharaoh's troops. 28. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. All the soldiers died. Verse 29. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Can you picture what it was like to walk between two multi-storied walls of water, nothing holding it back, except the power of Almighty God? 30. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And the Egyptians were so careful to preserve the body of their dead. But just look at them here. Their bodies are laying on the shore like dead fish. God has just finished humiliating, sinfully proud, 
Egypt. 31. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Israel now knows that they were foolish to murmur against Moses and distrust the Lord. Chapter 15 Verse 1 Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Israel praises God for victory. Verse 2 the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. They praise God for being their strength. See, they knew they did not contribute anything to their deliverance. Verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. God says he's a warrior. Tell you what, God knows how to fight. And he does not back down when opposing evil. Verse 4 Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. God threw them into the sea because they were, they were in his way. He did it because they would not move out of his way even after he asked them to. And they were also in the way of his people. 5. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. This battle was a knockout. Verse 6. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. God dashes his enemies to pieces. Like he would throw an icicle on a sidewalk and watch it shatter. 7. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. God's wrath is compared to a flamethrower. His enemies are like dry, brittle straw. You put fire on straw, and you end up with ashes. 8. And with the blast of your nostrils, the water, waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. God made the water in the Red Sea to act like concrete walls. Verse 9 The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Oh, Pharaoh was so consumed with himself that he became self-deceived. He actually believed that he would prevail against God. 10. You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? It is possible that some of Egypt's idolatry rubbed off on some of the Israelites. That is in part why God um, that is in part why God did things the way that he did, destroyed the credibility of each one of those gods before his people left Egypt. God wanted his people to see him in action. He wanted them to know that he alone was God, and they do. Twelve. You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. The word of the plagues that the God of Israel destroyed Egypt with spread all the way to the promised land. And the wicked people there are shaking. Verse 15 Then the chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, will take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness 
of your arm. They will be as still as a stone till your people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over whom you have purchased. The Israelites are just overflowing with confidence in God. Verse 17 You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. And so after many years of death, and loss, slavery, they know that the momentum is finally on their side because God is on their side. Verse 19 for the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea then Miriam the prophetess the sister of Aaron took the timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances and Miriam answered them sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea God saved Israel and they felt like celebrating so Miriam grabs a tambourine and starts praising God and why not let them enjoy themselves verse 22 so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea then they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water now it is too bad they could not freeze that Red Sea moment and stay in it for about 40 years the Red Sea thing was great and they were flying high but there's a test they don't have any water verse 23 now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? They went from good times to hard times, and they failed the test. They failed when they chose to complain. Verse 25 So, they, so he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree when he cast it into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made a statute and an ordinance for them and there he tested them the answer God gave was that piece of wood which really did not seem like an answer at all to Moses but it was sometimes God answers our prayers but we do not know it right away sometimes it takes a while for us to recognize that what we have is the answer and we have the answer right in front of us we just don't see it prayer opens our eyes to see God's answers to prayers <clears throat> verse 25 so he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree the last part of verse 25 it says there he made a statute and an ordinance for them and there he tested them and said if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord God and do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals they had been subject to the unfair and cruel laws of Pharaoh now they must be subject to the holy laws of God the difference is God's laws are proper his laws are good for them however if they do not do them they can expect the same physical problems physical judgments that they saw God place on Egypt that is because God has no pets 27 then they came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees so they camped there by the waters and now things are nice again isn't that the way it is we go from good times to bad bad times to good and we'll pick up our study in chapter 16 verse 1